I don't write music every single day of my life, and I'm okay with that. We're going to talk about balancing life, projects, and burnout, as well as look at a magical dramedy cue on this week's 52 Cues Vlog Check-In. What is happening, YouTube? This is Dave Croft. Welcome to week 21 of my 52 Cues vlog. If uh, this is your first time, welcome aboard. We are so glad that you are here today. Uh, what we do is uh, every every week I take a look at, uh, ba look back on one of the cues that I wrote in the week before, talk about the cue, unpack the sounds, uh, maybe the compositional structure, the arrangement, and uh, just, the, just the details that went into making that cue. Q. Also, I talk about life things, um, things that are going on in the industry, things that are going on in my life as a professional production music composer. If you want to skip over the vlog portion and just get right to the cue breakdown, you can check out the timestamps in the description below. I have timestamps all the way throughout. If this is your first time, or maybe you've been here several times but you haven't yet, I would encourage you to hit that like, subscribe, notification bell, all the standard YouTube stuff. Uh, I used to say all of that ironically, but the more I, I've gotten into being a YouTuber and uh, doing vlogs and such, I do realize, or I did come to realize, that those types of interactions from you, the viewers, actually help other composers just like you find this video. So if you if you do find it helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. All of that stuff. Also, I want to give a personal thanks to all of my Patreon patrons who help make this vlog possible. Lots more about that at the end of the video. So today, I wanted to talk about the fact that I don't write music every single day. And I got to admit, for a while, I, I kind of felt like a failure. I felt like I wasn't being professional enough because you read enough books and, and, and you read either biographies about uh, other composers or especially like authors and, and, and they just write every single day. And it is part of my Miracle Morning that I've talked about before. And I'll have a link um, floating around that points to my previous vlog entry where I talked about my Miracle Morning. And I do write several days a week, or at least produce music, whether it's mixing, mastering, uh, working on my, my, my sample libraries, or not, not my sample libraries, but organizing, you know, just, I am in the DAW working nearly every day, but not every day. And this is this is what kind of got me thinking about this this week as I'm as I'm reading books on successful authors and successful composers and you read message forums and they, they it's like this is in them and if they don't write they pop you know it's like this creative angst and uh, they have to write and I got to admit I'm I'm not necessarily like that and and I would guess that there are several folks out there that aren't like that too and maybe you feel like less than a, a perfect composer, or maybe you feel like you don't have the drive enough. This past weekend, I went on a 24-mile bike ride <laughs> with a buddy of mine uh, living here in Central Florida. We have access to some really amazing bicycle trails that uh, are converted rail, like rails to trails, converted rail lines that they turn into really gorgeous bicycle trails with stops and restrooms and bike shops kind of all along the way. Uh, this specific trail went around uh, Lake Apopka. It's called the West Orange Trail. And tw so 24 miles. And by the end of it, you know, I, I was pretty tired, but I noticed that my heart rate wasn't as high towards the end of my ride as it was at the beginning, even though we were, we were pedaling I felt like we were pedaling twice as hard to try to tr try to get to get home because of the way the inclines worked or not home but back to our cars and I started researching researching it and, and realizing that that's kind of a thing with cycling where your heart rate kind of plateaus and no matter how hard you pump your heart rate will not increase and this is a product of fatigue 
where your heart just kind of, I guess, just kind of, nope, there's, there's no more gas in the tank here. And so you can pump as hard as you, you want your little legs, Dave, but the heart rate is not going to increase. It almost becomes kind of like a, I guess, a preservation, like a survival, you know, biological survival instinct. But no matter, no matter how hard you pump, your heart rate is not going to increase. And this isn't limited to just cycling. This is kind of all forms of exercise. And I feel like creativity is very similar to exercise. I feel like creativity is a muscle and as such should be worked out like a muscle. Now, I'm not like Captain McBodybuilder or anything like that, but I do have some experience, you know, either weightlifting. I've already talked about how I rollerblade every morning. I went, I went for a 40 minute rollerblade session this morning, even before it's 649 in the morning right now. And uh, I've already done my morning exercises. I've got my coffee here. My morning routine is alive and well. So I understand kind of exercise and I realize that if I kind of keep pushing through, pushing through exercise, then I start to see kind of a negative, negative returns or at least a plateau. And because I believe that creativity is a muscle and as such should be worked out the same as a muscle group, you should exercise your creativity consistently, but you're going to reach a point. If you just keep pushing through and pushing through and pushing through, I found, at least for me, that you reach a point of negative returns where no matter what you're doing, you're, you're, you're nothing that... <laughs> You, you, you're actually doing more harm. Harm might, might be a little heavy term, but it's definitely not productive time. And I have found that rest days, days deliberately not trying to create something, for me, has yielded better results on the other side. Now, obviously, there are times when you have to push through deadlines, projects, opportunities, you muscle through. But it's the times in between those that it's okay. It's okay to, to, to take a rest day. Just like with cyclists have to take a rest day in between rides, else their heart rate will not increase to the point where it's benefiting their bodies. Creativity, it's the same way. You push, you push, you push, push and when you get to a point where you can rest and you don't have to wake up and, and, and push through, it's okay not to. It's okay. At least it is for me. And I'd imagine several of you. Because if you keep pushing through, you run the risk of not only not really putting out anything you're going to be happy with, but you run the risk of, of affecting your relationships. As composers, this is a pretty solitary lifestyle. And if I sequester myself up in my studio all day, every day, then, I mean, that's going to have an impact on my marriage. And so when I can, I don't write. It just so happens that today is a holiday in the United States, and I've got my miracle morning, I've got my workout, need to go to the grocery store, grab some, um, grab some stuff. But after, uh, after around lunchtime, I'm, I'm going to be done for the day, and I'm not going to actively compose any music today. And that's okay. Because today... It's more beneficial for my life to spend time with my family, to, 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 it's Memorial Day in the U.S., so to, to, to give, hold space for those who have lost their lives in service of, the, of our country. My father was a Marine. He wasn't killed in battle, but he was a retired Marine, so I have an, an enormous respect for our military. But I'm not going to compose. And I'm, I'm prepared to be okay with that. And I guess I'm giving you permission to be okay with that as well. 
else, your creative heart rate is going to plateau. And I, I would like to think you wouldn't leave relation, uh, you know, a trail of, of burnt relationships behind you. So for what it's worth, that's been on my mind. Maybe it, it came after my 24 mile cycle cycling ride. And uh, I absolutely felt it the next day. And, uh, I went from about 10 miles to 24 miles, but we're going to be going again soon. And, uh, and yeah, so those are my thoughts on, on that. So let's now switch gears, no pun intended, and check out a cue that I wrote during our recent live stream. This is a dramedy cue called Some Enchanted Sneaking. Some Enchanted Sneaking, which is, of course, a play on the title Some Enchanted Evening. Um, like I said, this was a, a cue written during one of our recent live streams and was a response to a publisher's search looking for very traditional dramedy cues. So no, no hip-hop beats or anything like that. And uh, I was going for... Well, when I started, I knew I wanted something kind of in a waltz, boom, pop, pop, mm, pop, pop, kind of that creepy, uh, little, little creepy, but uh, funny kind of waltz, like a, a, a dramedy waltz. And so that's, uh, that's why we started with some Symphobia strings layered with Vienna Symphonic Library strings. And I've talked about this before, how you can really create a unique sound by layering string elements. The Symphobia strings are very, very much ensemble strings. So it's kind of like the whole section and they're very wet. And the Vienna Symphonic strings are very close. It's like very, very close mic And so blending them together, you get a fuller sound, which is, is relatively unique to, to, to my library choices. And so it's, it's not just BBCSO, it's not just, you know, uh, 8DO anthology or, or whatever. It is um, a blending of string libraries that I happen to really enjoy, and I think they work really well together. The other thing I did for this that I consciously did all the way throughout is I created a series of repeated edit points. So my phrase is a four bar phrase with one bar in between throughout the whole cue. Now, we'll see if it lands or not. We always typically wanna put at least one edit point, possibly two edit points. This gives editors a really clear uh, clear signpost in the, um, in the waveform where you can see and edit and move things around as needed. But I decided to kind of work that all the way throughout. So I have high, my high pizzicato and my low pizzicato. And then filled it in with celeste, which is, uh, this is stock logic, stock logic celeste. 
So here at the beginning, when there was no melody, then I used the celeste to kind of fill, fill the gap a little bit. harp and then here in bar 21 then we kind of settle into a little bit i also recorded a triangle here and this is an, an alan abel triangle that i just hit and and yeah obviously there are plenty of really stellar stellar triangles um but i i dusted it off for uh for a cue a, a, a while ago where I needed to do some really intricate open closed things. And that's really easy to do on a recorded triangle, but really difficult to pull off successfully and, and um, realistically using samples and little rolls and that kind of thing. And so, yeah, I figured I would, I would bring it in. The harp here is the Vienna Symphonic Harp. It's coming up. And so it's all about letting, letting these little, little um, call and response elements. So we have a kind of our call. And this is that borrowed, I'm in a minor key here, and that's a borrowed major four chord, which uh, if you want to say borrowed from the major key, uh, or if you're thinking kind of in Dorian mode with that uh, raised sixth scale degree and you get the, the raised third of the four chord, and this gets used a lot. It, it infuses a little element of hope to it, to something that's otherwise um, otherwise pretty minor. You find this a lot in, in heroic themes that are in a minor key by that major four chord. See also several of Michael Giacchino's scores for Marvel. He, the Spider-Man uh, theme has a lot of this kind of thing. If I'm not mistaken, the uh, Doctor Strange. Okay. So now we bring in the marimba. The marimba, uh, because the brief specifically wanted marimba and pizzicato. So just nice and low. And using the BBCSO tambourine here, which works really well, because it has that th the, the, the tap, and this is a tambourine, an orchestral tambourine, which has a head on it. And an orchestral tambourine is, is different than something like this. This is just a, a rhythm tech kind of pop tambourine. Uh, I'm not gonna play, it's gonna really get loud in the mic. But the pop tambourine, you know, you would shake kind of Davy Jones style from the monkeys. But with an orchestral tambourine, you can not only hit it, but you can hit it with your fist and you get this really nice kind of woody, pop sound but in addition to that you can thumb roll it and i don't see i don't think i can get one yeah you can get that that thumb roll type of a sound and so it's not it's not like a it's not a shake roll it's a thumb roll boom that right and uh, it works really 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 well and uh, i was i was super pleased with the uh, the BBCSO, I think it sounds fantastic. Now, as I was uh, making this track, I actually tried to pull this off using the Rhythm Tech tambourine, which is just like a, a shake pop tambourine. But out of I don't know how many how many thumb rolls I tried, probably probably ten or twelve, fifteen or twenty, a lot enough to where I, and of those, I only got one that I was really happy with, not really enough to kind of edit it and cut it all together. Okay, so we have, uh, we have, it's hanging out, kind of, kind, of, kind of, just like a little intro setting up the primary melody, which is the celeste coming in. Ba, boom, ba, nothing to write home about, bum, bum. really following the chord progression. Then we have the BBCSO xylophone. And these are rolls, but they are uh, 16th note triplets. So they are quantized or they're, uh, they're metered. 
and I'm keeping once once I once I settle into it, I have this four bar intro, and then I go back to my my four bar phrase with my one bar break. And then I, I, I come in on beat three of that. I had somebody during the live chat say that this sounds, this sounds kind of like, I think they said Dexter or like Curb Your Enthusiasm or, or some, something like that. All right, so now I have an extra bar break. And this is my really clear edit point because now I'm gonna push the energy even further. So here I have, at the beginning, I have really clear little breaks. The second part, so we're kind of in three sections. The, the middle section, it's when I introduce the melody. The third section, I create an, a two bar break in between, a really clean edit point. Okay, and then a bass clarinet and harp pickup and a mark tree that I recorded myself. This is a tree works uh, or wind chimes, but it's called a mark tree. And the xylophone, celeste, that's still going. My my strings go more into an um pa pa type type of a uh, type of a pattern. Oops. And hint at a little melody that's coming on top. All right, this is a VSL bass clarinet, which I think sounds really good. Way, way up, up, upper octaves. And then layer in a melodica. which is a recorded instrument that uh, sounds almost like a tango accordion. It's got, it gives that accordion vibe without me having to learn or buy an accordion. And because it's breath controlled, and if you're not familiar with the melodica, it's an instrument that if you've ever watched uh, the, the late show with Stephen Colbert, then John Baptiste plays one. It's like a little, it looks like, it looks something like this, but this is a MIDI controller, uh, but he blows into the end of it. And so it's a breath, a wind controlled instrument, uh, but it's really, really great for this kind of thing because you can, you can control the, uh, the, the dynamics and, and let it quite literally breathe. And so little things like this, using a cheap Honer Melodica, which maybe costs like 80 bucks, maybe, and it, it infuses such an organic element to the cue, which is so virtual, so many virtual instruments. And now I'm adding another layer of energy to this. At this tempo, I can kind of get away with eight bar ideas or at least longer eight bar phrases. And so I'm gonna layer in the flute, harmonizing. You know the little uh, xylophone gliss to to end it to end it out. So it's a stair step type of arrangement where every every long phrase or every song section just increases on top of the previous one, as opposed to build 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 pull back have kind of a breakdown and build. It's just this just the way that the cue kind of came together. I don't. I always try to go for that form where you build, pull back, and then build. But sometimes, sometimes they they don't always, always kind of adhere to that. But but I really enjoyed writing this. I sent it off to the publisher. Uh, we'll see if they like it. I hope they like it. I mean, obviously. And uh, and yeah, we'll see. As I was coming to title it, 
I, I was, I was, I was really struggling with with how how do I incorporate some sort of magical component because the the cue kind of started bending into that. It started out as one thing, but then with the celeste and then the triangle and the melodica, it just felt. And with that major four chord, it felt there was a I don't know supernatural supernatural otherworldly quality or something like that. I don't know. It just it just kind of started feeling a little bit more magical. And that's when I reached for the Mark Tree. And the Mark Tree really, really, really sold it. Now, did they want something magical? Not necessarily. But by giving it a title like Some Enchanted Sneaking, the Enchanted t- kind of brings that to the table. So as a music supervisor is looking through it, you know, they might, they, it might be for a holiday show. I could absolutely see this working on on some sort of like Christmas lighting competition or or a kids show or or something where where playful innocent but magical is kind of happening and so we'll see we'll see if if they if they like it but uh, I hope I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that was helpful to see. Uh, Once again, thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, and all of that. Like I said, this was written during one of our recent live streams. And I live stream every Thursday night. Uh, This week, uh, or next week, is going to be on a Wednesday night. But I live stream every week. And this, this is a benefit for our Patreon patrons. They get access to the live stream. If that's something you are interested in, check out the Patreon information below. Uh, to join, it's just it's just a dollar, just one dollar a month. And if you don't ever do that, that's okay too. If you never subscribe, that's okay too. I'm just glad that you are with me today. So that is going to do that for me. And uh, I hope that you have a stellar week 21. Be sure to tune in next week, and I will be breaking down my cue for week 22. Until then, peace. <laughs>